Hello and welcome to our talk on Shopware PWA. My name is Dominic. And my name is Patrick. And today we'll be talking you through the thought process and the creation and uh, the structure and the way that uh, Shopware PWA works. So we'll start off by giving some general underlying concepts, talking about what PWA is and what other concepts uh, went into creation of PWA. Um, then we're going to talk about the architecture and the structure uh, underlying the PWA. So we'll talk about how Shopware relates to PWA, how we use the APIs and so on, and what, what kind of things it enables in the end. And in the third part, we're going to talk about how to customize the PWA, how to set up your own projects, but also how to get involved, how to contribute, and um, how, to, yeah, how to start your own project with PWA. Um, so let's dive right into it by starting to talk about progressive web apps. So progressive web apps are in fact a standard or a guideline, a set of guidelines which has been introduced by Google a couple of years ago. Um, and they tried to find a common set of features, um, browser features mostly, uh, that would allow responsive websites to surpass mobile apps because uh, having a responsive website and having a mobile app would for, for any customer or any company mean that you would have to um, develop two things at once when they're really trying to solve very similar problems. So um, PWAs have a couple of features in common. Things like being installable on a device's home screen or being installable on a desktop. Another thing is that they make use of so-called service workers. Service workers are featured by most of almost any um, modern browser, which allows applications or websites to perform asynchronous requests against the server. So you can prefetch some data or asynchronously update some, some articles or some products or some, some other content uh, on your website, whilst the browser is not even, uh, the, the user is not even using the app. So um, you can prefetch some data and then afterwards you can also offline browse that um, if you have no internet connection. Another feature is that, that you can make use of notifications if you implement them and um, some other things like every, almost every PWA is also a single page application, which means that once the page is loaded, it doesn't get fully reloaded, but instead it uses an API in the background to fetch data and then repopulate the application or the website. Another underlying concept are the so-called universal or isomorphic JavaScript application. So that's a pretty complicated word and essentially it just means that you have the same code base on your server side and on your client side. So that might be um, might make you think uh, in the first moment because normally you're used to have something like PHP in the back end or Python in the back end, and um, on the front end you probably have something like well JavaScript, HTML, uh, a mix of those probably, right? Um, so how does that work? Um, and why would you do that in fact, okay? So uh, universal isomorphic uh, JavaScript applications usually have, a, have an underlying framework. Um, so this whole thing started with Node.js applications when you would have Node.js on a web server and also have JavaScript in the client. But um, there was still a bit of a difference in the API that the language was used on the server side and on the client side. But in the, in the past couple of years, um, some frameworks, emerge, frameworks emerged that actually uh, are able to use the same code on the client and on the server side, such as Nux.js or Next.js, which you might have heard of, um, which is kind of the same thing just for React. Um, so what's the benefit of universal JavaScript applications? So first of all, obviously, as I've said, it's that we can share code between server and client. But what we can also do is uh, something called hybrid rendering. Hybrid rendering ultimately just means that when you visit a page, um, the first visit of the page is requested at the server, and then the server would render that page on the server side and send the final document over to you. However, when you're switching the page and clicking on some link, you're not making a full page reload, but instead, the application is going to send a request to the API and then rehydrate the page just like a normal single page application would 
within your browser. And um, actually, this little diagram on the left side indicate or uh, visualizes it uh, um, quite nicely by showing what kind of um, what kind of functionality can be done on the client and on the server. And you can see that there's quite a big overlap. When it comes to Shopware PWA, you can summarize Shopware PWA um, as a universal JavaScript front end adhering to that principle that I have explained before um, with PWA features. And this whole thing is built upon Shopware 6's API. So that's actually yeah the, the, the short summary of what Shopware PWA is. So it's a little bit more than just a PWA. Um, in fact, Shopware PWA is an open source project. Um, it is built upon Nux.js, which I've mentioned before, which is, um, which is this uh, isomorphic JavaScript application framework. Well, they call themselves the intuitive view framework or the progressive view, view framework. Um, and uh, that's what we're using, and it comes with great features like code splitting, like using the file system as an API to build your build your application and routes easily. Um, but speaking about Shopware PWA, it was developed as a cooperation between Shopware court, uh, the Shopware core teams, and Vue Storefront. So. Um, it's in fact, it, it in fact takes the best from both platforms and tries to bring them together. And that's what we did during this project. And um, we just released beta about three weeks ago. And um, you, you can feel free or feel invited to, to go ahead and try that out. And in fact, a couple of projects are already being developed in that, which we are really excited about. OK, so let's uh, continue with some architectural thoughts on Shopware PWA. Starting with, uh, well, a bit of setting the stage. Um, so we tried Shopware PWA to be, uh, first of all, easy to use um, for developers. Okay, so as a developer, you should have a good time uh, setting up PWA. It should work out of the box and not require too much configuration or setting up. But on the other side, at the other end of the spectrum, we wanted Shopware PWA to be able to uh, facilitate more complex projects as well and being able to individualize it to your, um, to your needs. If we take a look at the architecture of uh, Shopware with Shopware PWA, what you would have is on the one hand, obviously a Shopware 6 backend. And the Shopware 6 backend would be containing all of the state of your application. So things like products, categories, data, images, all, type, all sorts of media in general, uh, but also plugins which are installed, okay? And then the Shopware PWA would use the Shopware internal or the Shopware native APIs, namely the store API and the admin API, to um, provide a front end which is completely separate, just connected through the API. Uh, we also facilitate the Shopware plugins to a certain degree, and I'm going to talk about, or we're going to talk about that later on. Um, but the really interesting part is, of course, um, that we have a completely separate uh, modular architecture right here. Um, and it also allows you to create multiple front ends completely independent of your back end. And this whole thing is a, is a matter of minutes, if not seconds, to just spin up a new front end um, without ever touching your Shopware instance to do that. So, um, if you take a look at this, uh, at this diagram, we still have the Shopware backend on the left side. And then on the right side, we have multiple storefronts, which might be brand shops, which might be uh, more interactive landing pages, you name it. Um, and they're all using the same API. They're all using the same backend. And that's perfectly fine because we are completely headless at this place and um, we can scale independently on the right side. And that's a pretty cool thing. So we can take, for example, one of those front-end instances to briefly show you what's under the hood. As we can see here, that Shopper is communicated through API client, which is a connection point of Shopper PWA. On the next layer, we introduced helpers, composables, and CMS components. Composables are Vue 3 feature, which enabled us to take care of most of the business logic so that you can focus on more visible parts. The next stage is a theme, which contains all the views, components, and slots for the Shopper plugins. At the very bottom is the final project you've created. So under the hood, you have all these goodies, and you can use it right away, as is a fully functional store, or start customizing it to your own needs. So 
Another thing that we put a big focus on were the uh, shopping experiences or the CMS of Shopware for the ones who don't know that word. Um, so we try to incorporate um, all of the CMS features that we have in the standard Shopware core into the PWA. So we are kind of uh, adapting the structure that Shopware or the Shopware core dictates and transferring it to the PWA. So you'll have a good time extending and using the CMS if you're working on a PWA project. And in fact, Patrick will walk you uh, a bit deeper through this um, uh, later on. So just uh, to, to get a quick overview, um, we're having a PWA website on the left side. And um, within this whole yellow frame, we're actually seeing a CMS page. And the corresponding API response, or part of the corresponding API response, is what we're seeing on the right side. So this is how Shopware will deliver that CMS page to the PWA. And then Shopware will go and take that structure um, of the CMS page, containing sections, containing blocks and elements, and then it will pass that, interpret it, and then render it. So that also allows you to build custom blocks or override existing blocks so you can completely customize the appearance of the CMS page um, within your own project. Another thing we try to incorporate or that we, that we actually did incorporate into the PWA um, are Shopware plugins. So um, if you think about plugins um, in Shopware, you can install them. They bring a certain set of functionalities. Um, usually they make some changes to the interface, at least if they're front-end related and not, not, not back-end related. Um, what does it mean in Shopware PWA? So in Shopware PWA, uh, plugins can define custom components, custom view components, and those view components can then be rendered into slots which are predefined um, inside the default theme. Um, so the, the theme of the PWA. Um, and the cool thing is, um, when you're building a Shopware plugin, you can provide resources for the PWA. And then, there, then there's a simple command that lets the PWA pick up on those resources and kind of bake them into the storefront that is created afterwards. So um, it will feel like it's, like it's one, um, and that will greatly improve runtime performance and so on. But the main takeaway is that, in fact, you can build plugins and make them compatible with Shopware PWA whilst just installing them as normal Shopware plugins. And uh, we've got a lot of documentation on that in um, the Shopware PWA documentation, which is linked further on, uh, further down the presentation. So another thing that we uh, built into the PWA is the concept of themes. I've just mentioned the default theme. Um, so themes are, in very generally speaking, our way to change the appearance of your, of your application. So you can have something like a common foundation for uh, multiple brand websites that might differ slightly. Um, but by default, Shopware, uh, Shopware PWA ships with a so-called default theme, which you can then override component by component. But since uh, the default theme is based upon a component library, a UI component library called Storefront UI, um, you can also make use of CSS variables and CSS classes to uh, customize the outer appearance of your theme very finely. So how to start? I'll walk you through the process to set up your own Shopper PWA and connect it to Shopper instance. Basically, what we have here is a Node.js project. We provided a CLI for you to easily set it up. So all you need to do is to create a new directory where you want to have your Shopper PWA instance and run the following command to initiate the project. It will ask you some questions like Shopper instance address and access token for API connection. By default, you can connect to our demo instance as well. After the creation process, you're ready to develop your PWA. Just run yarn dev and see the results in our browser. This is something you'll see after that. We provided a default theme for you, so you can start your PWA shop instantly. And all you can see between top bar and the footer is the shopping experiences. So you can change its content just by drag and drop CMS components. We've tried very hard to have the smoothest possible onboarding with a new generated project. So this is a brief look for your project structure. As I mentioned before, it's a Node.js application, 
So all our dependencies are declared in package.json file and placed inside node modules directory. So early on, I already talked about how um, we incorporated the CMS into the Shopware PWA. And if we take a look at the directory structure, in fact, we see that we find the very same structure as we do when you're, for example, creating custom elements or custom blocks um, for the admin panel. So we have the CMS directory, and within those, we have elements, blocks, and sections uh, containing their respective components. And then the mapping between uh, the core components and your custom components uh, is defined within the CMS map JSON file. Easy as that. You can also easily override global CSS variables, team components, translations, add custom pages, and much more. In the config file, you can change your settings, for example, API credentials or default language. So as we'd like to start a new shop, we want to change a few things to customize it first. It's effortless with our CLI. You can pick the team component to override just by typing its name. Component names are visible in the developer tools, and CLI will help you to find the right name with autocomplete. In this example, we extracted a logo component. So you can add your own logo and immediately see the results. And you can do this with any team component. Another thing is plugins development. Dominic already showed you the concept of it. Now we can start developing a plugin on our own. With the generated project, we already provided a local plugin template, which you can use to start coding. But what options do you have? You can enable development mode locally using CLI, and we have it enabled on the demo page as well. It adds a button to your footer, which turns all team slots into boxes, so you can find the right place to inject your plugin. When you click the box, you can see slot name in the Developer Tools console. So when you know where you want to inject your plugin, you're going to SV Plugins directory inside your project. And there you can start development with instant preview. How does it look on the real page? We've already seen a few creative plugin solutions from the community. This is something which gives you endless possibilities for integrations. So you've quickly created your Shopper PWA and want to put it online. That's not a problem. You can host it on any Node.js environment using PM2, use serverless deployments on Versal, or dedicated solution of Storefront on Cloud. OK, so this makes us already conclude the presentation on Shopware PWA. We just want to give you a few hints of uh, about how you, can, how you can get involved or how you can find out more. So obviously, the whole project is open source, and it's uh, available on GitHub. So if you just search for Shopware-PWA on GitHub, um, you're, you'll be finding uh, the repository that we're working on. We are, we are tagging the releases. Um, we are having uh, um, very, uh, a lot of, lot of discussions um, concerning features, concerning concepts. Uh, we take a lot of pull requests and obviously also issues. So if you're missing something in the PWA, uh, feel free to create an issue for that in our GitHub repository. If you seek help or you have some other questions or just want to hang out with us, Join our Slack channel, Shopper PWA, on slack.viewstorefront.io or Shopper Community Slack. Apart from that, we're constantly improving our docs for you to be able to find the most answers for your questions there. It also contains guides, deployment instructions, concepts, and so on. Last but not least, we just want to say thank you for listening and uh, joining the talk. Um, a quick reminder on how to set up Shopware PWA using NPX. And uh, of course, feel free to follow us on Twitter if you're interested in any updates about Shopware or Shopware PWA. And that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Bye.